welcome to the Explore Your Spirit with Kayla show. I'm your host, Kayla Ambrose, bringing you back to Explore Your Spirit TV. Welcome to another episode, and this has been a lot of fun trying this with you, our viewers, and going from radio to TV, so we appreciate you taking the journey with us. Last month, we had Julie Bond Genovese with her show, Nothing Short of Joy. It was such a pleasure to speak with Julie about her journey and what she had been through, and I hope you enjoyed her book. Email us chat with us, Twitter, Facebook, drop us a line, and check out the new Explore Your Spirit app where you can watch all the episodes of Explore Your Spirit TV, you can download the shows, you can Twitter with me, keep up with me from your app, I love to hear from you. I'm so excited about our guest today. With us today is the peaceful warrior himself, Dan Millman. My uh, journey with Dan goes way back. My husband and I have wonderful stories of when we first found his book independently and then met it. It was one of the very first books that we shared together and brought us so much joy in our lives to know that we were on the same path, the same place. And so Dan's been with us for many years uh, in spirit, whether he knew it or not. We've had Dan on the show as a guest many times. He's talked about Peaceful Warrior. Uh, we've had him on for Journey of the Socrates. And now it's his new book, The Four Purposes of Life with Dan Millman, his new book. Dan, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Kayla. It's such a pleasure to have you back on. I've loved talking with you on radio and now to see your face. It's fantastic. And I love what you did with this book because you took one of my other favorite books of yours as well and incorporated, incorporated that with the uh, numbers and putting all that together. And that's, I think, one of the most practical books you wrote before. And I love how in this new millennium, this new age, this new era, you've taken that and enhanced it further. So tell us about that and how you started with the book. Well, people have asked me, um, when did you come up with this idea of four purposes of life? And I do remember distinctly, you know, being a Pisces, my chronology is today, yesterday, and sometime in the past. <laughs> but it was about four years ago, I think, that I gave a talk in the United Kingdom on the four purposes of life. But how that particular structure came up, these things are kind of mysterious. It just appeared. Um, and it's not arbitrary, though. Uh, you know, some people, as I write in the prologue of the four purposes, some people might say our ultimate purpose is love, whatever the question, love is the answer, or that um, uh, surrender to God or uh, enlightenment is our ultimate spiritual goal, whereas I also have very empirical friends who say, no, that's all concepts. They say the biological purpose is bonding, having children, mating, that's our human purpose as well. Some people say there are three purposes, or five. Some may say there are as many purposes as there are people. But just as we separate the points in the compass into four directions, or the days of the year into four seasons, this particular structure of these four purposes can lend real cre credibility and structure and order to our life that might otherwise feel chaotic. And that's what I set out to do in this particular book. And, you know, Dan, I love that, what you do. We've all opened up, a lot of us, consciously. We've explored our spirit. We've looked into all these things. But right now, we need practical steps. We need to know what to do today, just how to live, how to feed ourselves. We, everything is in an uproar and a change, which I like. I like the chaos. I like the change. But we do need to stay grounded, and, and we need some steps. And you're right on target with that. Well, as you know, it's good to have our head in the clouds, but our feet on the ground, and that's a stretch for some of us. Yes. <laughs> um, so, and again, that paradox, the idea of a peaceful heart, warrior spirit, that's uh, what I teach as well. And they say you, that we teach what we need to learn, I must need to learn a lot, <laughs> because, because 15 books or so and counting, uh, I lose count at some point. Uh, each one of those books had to justify itself. I never have written a book just to write another book. In fact, after Way of the Peaceful Warrior was written in 1980, I didn't write another book for 10 years because I had nothing new to say, which I find rather refreshing. Uh, I waited until new information, new mentors came in. I was very excited to share, and then it was almost a book a year. And each of my books is different. They're another facet of what I teach, but I also call them pieces of the puzzle. And it wasn't time until now to put those pieces together in the four purposes of life. So you are quite correct. I do draw upon some of my earlier work, some of the core issues. There's a book called Everyday Enlightenment, which describes 12 gateways to personal growth, what actually constitutes the field of personal growth. So, But they became clear as the 12 required courses each of us are taking here in the school of life in the first purpose. 
And as you pointed out, in the life you were born to live. Yes. Another book I wrote in 1994, very popular, million million copies out there now, I think. Um, that was obviously, I couldn't ignore that. That's the third purpose in this new book. But I distilled it in a way that puts it in a context that makes much more sense than when they were all the pieces separate. I agree. It, it really uh, brings everything together in four easy steps to do. And that's about the attention span that we all have right now with everything else we're trying to do. And when you break it down into four, of course four is such a sacred number and the four corners of the earth and everything else, it's really connected in that way. And I, I think good things come in small packages, like they say. And I like a book where I can get to it and get to the heart of it. And to me, I just want to say I really connect with the Divine Feminine and love the energy coming in and try to be that embodiment of Mother Earth and Divine Feminine. And I really think of you as such the Divine Masculine. The way your books were written, of course women love them. I, I love your books. I love all your work and all the women I talk to do as well. But they reach out to men who really need it at this time as well. Change is hard for everyone and I feel it's uh, even more so for men at this time to redefine themselves who they are and you were an athlete uh, you, you're someone who's a winner you know what it takes to get to where you want to be you've had an amazing life um, and I, I feel like you're such a good represent, uh, representation of the divine masculine for men and do you get that often from men that you uh, talk with? Well the only thing I can say empirically is that I've taught seminars for 25 or 30 years and it, it's always, I'm always pleased and delighted to see that about 50% of the people who show up are male and about 50% female. That's a bit unusual, as you know, in spiritual seminars, yes. usually about 95% female. So there is that balance because each of us is striving to live with a peaceful heart, but male or female, there are times we also need a warrior spirit uh, because it takes courage to live in this world. So I think my work, that balance represented by the peaceful warrior, appeals to both men and women. And even though I've spoken with men's groups, I've spoken with some women's groups as well, I really just speak to people. Whatever their gender is, I know we have some different needs and each individual has his or her own individualized needs, but I speak to the heart of people, the issues we're all going through, and I certainly do in the four purposes of life. And as you pointed out, it is a small book, it's 150 pages. But a friend of mine recently said, Dan, you've seen in some movies these magical bags, like these big purses, a wizard's bag, where the purse is small, but all these things keep coming out of it. <laughs> and the book is like that. It has all this stuff in it that's bigger than, um, than, it, than the container, actually. And it, I think my books are smarter than I am. Oh, I love that. Your book has a lot of power and purpose in it. And I, I really find fun just taking it, picking it up, and I'll just randomly open to a page. And it's funny, I keep opening back to this one that I've, I've bookmarked. I've been here so many times. And it's about uh, determining your birth number and going through that. And do you do you know offhand what your birth number is when you've done this, Dan? Oh, you know, I would hope one? so. <laughs> <laughs> sure. In fact, in the first book, The Life You Were Born to Live, I used my birth date as an example of how to add up the birth numbers. But what I found much simpler now. Uh, you know, in the back of the book, we do say, if you want to do the math, we show you how. If you're at the beach somewhere, don't have internet access. But anybody who has access to the internet through their PBA, their phone, their computer, uh, any device, can go to PeacefulWarrior.com. That's my website, P with one L, P-E-A-C-E-F-U-L, PeacefulWarrior.com. And on the, the home page, of course, they'll see a picture of the book. They can, anyone can click on that and read more about it and order it if they want through Amazon or online or favorite bookstore. But right on that home page is the words life purpose. And if someone clicks on life purpose, um, they will go to the life purpose calculator. And anyone can do that at any time. Um, they can look at the calculator, put in their date of birth, it's very easy, and they will see immediately their birth number as calculated in the method that I learned, which is un very accurate. They will see their birth number and they will see a little teaser, an appetizer, maybe a paragraph with some core issues related to their life that may be quite different from other people they know or love. Um, so that's accessible immediately. Now, of course, we're jumping ahead a bit because this is the third purpose I discuss in the four purposes of life, which I call one's life path or hidden calling. Well, break it down for us. Tell us about the four purposes. Yeah, just as a brief summary, Kayla. The first purpose is learning life's lessons. 
Now, you know, to men and especially to women, I mean, that doesn't sound very sexy, learning life's lessons, you know. We've all gone to school, studied our arithmetic and math and English and, and all those other subjects, like the academics and the concepts. But learning life is different. You see, in other words, when I say life, Earth is a perfect school and daily life is our classroom, I mean, I don't think anybody's slapping their forehead going, who knew, you know? <laughs> I mean, we're all familiar with this idea, but the implications can be life-changing. And uh, Let me give an example. Many of us assume what we're really here to do in life is to somehow achieve, uh, spiritually or materially, any realm. We're here to achieve, we're here to, um, to uh, win or to succeed, to find love. Those things are wonderful, but I'm suggesting what we're actually here to do, every soul we're here on this earth to learn. Not just as one of the things, it is the primary reason we're here. Now, why would that be so significant? Because that means, when you really get this, even a really bad day or bad moment in a relationship, or at school, or uh, in a sport, or at, at work, can be a profoundly good moment, a positive moment, in terms of learning our soul's education, our evolution and growth. So there is no failure if we learn from them. That's what our primary purpose, and if people would reorient themselves, what can I learn from this, then we don't have to pretend to like difficult times in our lives, but when something happens, we can remember, this is about my learning. In fact, I would define faith, faith, F-A-I-T-H, as the courage to live as if everything that happens is for our highest good and learning. Now, I don't know if this is ultimately true, but I, I'll have the courage to live as if that is true. It makes a different kind of life. It does. I agree 100%. Highest and best. I think if we ask for that in our daily lives, even if that's all we do is just ask for highest and best in all that we do, we're so far ahead of the game. Well, it's a good reminder because it orients us toward remembering that whatever life delivers is part of our education. It is for our highest and best. Okay, how about number two? Well, of course, now let me, let me emphasize there's a lot more than just telling people Earth, you know, Earth is a school and we're here to learn lessons. Because somebody might ask me, Kayla, well, fine, but what courses do I have to pass in order to graduate? Mm -hmm. And I go into the 12 required courses every one of us is working on in daily life to really clarify it rather than stumbling through life, you know, from this thing to that trauma to this challenge we can actually see and break it down into, is this something about self-worth? Is it self-sabotage? Am I opening up to life? That's the first required course. We can get into uh, reclaiming our will, turning what we know into what we actually do, one of the major challenges in life. And we can get into the third and fourth and right through the 12 required courses. I go into the school rules and there's a lot more even in that first little section on learning life's lessons. The second uh, purpose of life is career and calling. And that is something that many people think of when they think of what am I here to do, they're thinking of how do I spend my time, what's my form of service, how do I fit in the world and make a difference for others. And some people have the highest calling, parenthood, motherhood, fatherhood, um, it's one of the highest callings. Um, other people uh, look for a particular career outside the home because see, career is about primarily earning an income. Uh, it may have many other wonderful things about it, people we work with and so on, but if we didn't make any money at it, we'd have to find something else because we need to earn a living, most of us. Mm -hmm. um, and calling is different. Calling is a passion, an interest, a drive. It's something we don't just want to do, we need to do. It really calls to us. We don't even know why sometimes. Now, some people combine their career and their calling. I've done that. Perhaps you have too where I love what I do and it feels like my calling but I've found a way to monetize it, I do it professionally. But it doesn't have to be that way. Some people do what they do during the day and then they, in their discretionary time, if they have some, they, they pursue an interest and that's their calling. So it, there's no one way and I tell stories in the book, stories of career and calling of people who have very different approaches to this whole issue of career and calling. But many people say, well how can I find my career? You know, and there are a lot of books on, um, on you know, what color is your parachute, how to find the right kind of work for you. I try to cover things that have not been discussed in the other books. And so I go into the importance of self-knowledge. 
you know, there's a, a period in our lives, you probably remember it, called the trying 20s, when we try this, oh, and we yes. try that, we mm -hmm. try that, because the 20s are a time to get to know who we are, really get to know ourselves. If we don't know ourselves well, we may pick the right mate, the right spouse, the right job for the wrong person, the one we thought we were. So it's critical that we get to know ourselves, and I give some methods in the section on career and calling to home in on the appropriate career to our talents, our interests, and our values. And so we start to differentiate what we think we should do from what we really want to do. Because we're not here to live someone else's life, or we're here to live ours, and it's important that we spend the time and life is an experiment. It takes time. We can't just graduate the day after college and know ourselves and know our whole life. So it takes time and experimentation. And I write about how it took me, you know, they say it takes 10 years to become an overnight success. Well, it took me 16 years of many times of jobs and searching here and searching there. So I've been in the trenches. I'm not just theorizing about this. And we go into ways to make wiser decisions in relationships, in career. Um, uh, a form of time travel, I, I call, um, this is a way to draw the subconscious, our imagination, our intuitive faculties into decision making uh, because the, the left brain isn't so good at making decisions. All it can do is weigh variables. So we have to bring our heart into it, our imagination, our spirit into it, and I show how to do that in career and calling and there's really uh, much more about uh, criteria, uh, the trinity of uh, values, um, that, we, that we can go into it if we have more time together. Um, and maybe we had to touch upon the third purpose, finding our hidden calling, which is beneath the theater of life. Most people never find that. And that's what we talked about maybe earlier, about looking up our birth number and getting much more deep insight into ourselves and more self-knowledge. It can happen in a quantum leap in self-knowledge by looking up our birth number. And I distill that into nine numbers, one through nine, and the qualities associated with each one of those. Some people may find it almost scary, it's so accurate. <laughs> but for people who are more skeptical, for people who say, well, I don't know, Dan, this is not sound, how can you add up the numbers of your date of birth and get valid, reliable, accurate information about your life? All they have to do is just read through the different numbers, look at the qualities, and consider them carefully in relation to their life. See which ones stand out for them most. And then if they want, they can look at the numbers and, and home in on it and see if, uh, if there seems to be some validity through from their own insight to what the numbers tell them. Um, so that's the third purpose, finding our life path, which is truly what we're here to do beneath all the other things that happen in our lives. And, of course, then we come to the fourth purpose of life, which may be the most important one of all, which is attending to our purpose in this arising moment. Now, did you have any comments or questions you wanted to say about that? I, I love what you were saying about the 20-somethings, and I spent my 20s doing everything wrong, so I feel like I've got, you know, I can teach about what not to do now afterwards. And I think I hear from so many people in their 20s who they have so much pressure. Their parents have said, why don't you know what you want to do in college? Why are you changing majors? Why don't you know what you want to be? You're grown up in a sense. But everything in our world is changing uh, faster, I think, than ever before. And, you know, here I am on new media. I'm an example of that with, with what I do. And, uh, you know, I'm a mystery school teacher by passion. That's what I love to do. But exoterically, I'm out here teaching in this way as well. And you learn to adapt. It's not a time to be in the cave or the temple like the old days. It's time to, to be out and be of the world. And I really feel for this generation, I think they're the ones that are changing the world, but they're having to fight the old guard telling them what they're doing wrong at the same time, when like you said, it's already the, the turbulent 20s. And so I really love that your book speaks to that and that you spoke about this today, because I think it's really an important message for, for everyone to hear, not just in your 20s, you can reinvent yourself at any age, any time. Any age. Uh, even retirees today, you know, after they do what all the things they think they've been missing and they play as much golf or fishing or visiting friends or traveling, then after a few months or maybe a year they go, well, now what? I'm yeah. still around and, I, you know, I, it feels like an extended holiday. What can, how can I reconnect with people? How can I then engage again and remain relevant? And so they look for some other way to serve. So this book is for anybody of any age. 
Um, I think people appreciate it actually the older they get. Out of college, start looking at life and making these mm -hmm. considerations. And you know, you recognize, you mentioned that life is accelerating, and that's why the subtitle of the four purposes of life is finding meaning and direction in a changing world. Because life comes at us in waves, right? And we can't predict the waves, we certainly can't control them, but we can learn to surf. And this, is the, this book helps us to learn to surf with those waves of change and to uh, have a real grounding, uh, a light shining in the darkness so we can begin, like a map of the territory, so we can begin to make sense of our life and have a clearer sense of direction uh, and a clearer sense of purpose. I love that. And you're absolutely right with people that are retiring. It used to be, oh, you're retired, you, you pull up everything and sit in your rocking chair and maybe have a long weekend, like you say, you know, where you go through months of playing golf. And now retirement is an option, but it's actually more of a freedom, I think, now, where you can go and reinvent yourself again and do so many new things. And, and life goes on. I love the way that we're redefining ourselves. It's so beautiful. Well, in fact, um, maybe, let's see if I, can, if I can do this, if I can find it. Um, I want, to, in the first purpose, uh, career and calling, I have um, uh, some stories of career and calling of different people who... Uh, Quite interesting stories uh, and a tremendous variety of stories. But here's a retired person, Bud Gardner. Now, Bud, everybody else's name is is uh, is uh, I made up for their privacy. But Bud said, "You can use my name, Dan." He was a former college English teacher, a writer, and a writing coach, preparing to follow his heart and play golf into his retirement years. Then he read a study uh, how playing a musical instrument late in life was good for aging brains and spirits. So he surprised himself by buying a harmonica. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't uh, entirely out of the blue. He had played old favorites on the mouth organ for 60 years, ever since his dad had taught him. But uh, soon bored playing the same old three songs, he placed an ad in a local paper, hoping to find someone to teach him more. After 20 people showed up at the first meeting, the Harmonicoots group, uh, the Love Coots it. for short, was born. <laughs> and for the next seven years since then, the Coots, 60 men and women, over 55 have met weekly with three goals, having fun, learning new songs, and playing together. Since then, they've played more than 250 gigs in retirement homes, hospitals, parades, elementary schools, and churches, uh, often bringing tears to grateful listeners. The Coots um, now have um, a mission to entice the world to the joys of playing, inspiring and exciting young and old to a lifetime of musical uh, enjoyment. So. This is what Bud did in his retirement, and this can happen. This is just one of many stories that um, I have in the book. And uh, frankly, I'm amazed there's so much in there because it is a, a small, very quick uh, read. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. I appreciate it. I, I'm trying to remember. I think the story that touched me was about um, a man who became a surgeon. Uh, and oh, was working yeah. on the circular saw and lost two of his fingers. Yeah, well, Charles was one of the most amazing people I ever met. I, when I was a professor at Oberlin College in Ohio some years ago, he, he loved to jump on the trampoline, and he was built more like a massive football tackle. Um, he was like the, the Fonzie of Oberlin. Uh, he was a motorcycle mechanic and drove too fast and wild man, kind of. And it turned out he was pretty smart. And afterward, he actually went to medical school, became a pediatric heart surgeon eventually, and um, was very successful, decided though to live a, a more modest life rather than the fast track and he went to Montana and where he continued practicing medicine until as you say he was building a, a, a birdhouse for his son when he slipped on some oil and, he, and, he, and removed two fingers from his right hand, his surgical hand and he tried working with the other hand tying stitches, it just didn't work so he realized that wouldn't, wouldn't happen for him anymore, surgery. So he immediately said, okay, it's time to go to law school. Mm -hmm. So then he went to law school, made the, the law review, became a top in his uh, law class, became an attorney. So he's a physician, an attorney, and now he's thinking of going to seminary school. But right now he's an administrator at a hospital. And he's, by the way, he has like his fifth degree black belt in Aikido as well, in martial art. Just an amazing guy. But his career and calling kept changing. And he just danced with life. And, uh, you know, somebody once said, I think it was in the book Zorba the Greek, someone said, if you could dance what you just said, I might understand. Love it. And I think he's danced his way through life, and he's still doing very well, and we're still good friends. He's a wonderful example in the book, because 
uh, there's this old saying, whatever happens, happens for good. You just have to learn to look at it and to see that, rather than, I think, letting society tell you what's good or bad. And he obviously found the good in everything that happened to him. Yeah. And, and, went and of course, there's stories of, of females, too. I mean, I try to be balanced in terms of presentations. Oh, so yeah. uh, this, this book is absolutely for uh, women or men. Um, anyone who would like to find a clearer sense of meaning and direction. You're so balanced, Dan. And, you know, the theme for our show, for Explore Your Spirit TV, is, is joy debris, which is, you know, finding the joy in, in everything. And, of course, you married joy, so... Yes, I did. You know, so how do you find joy in your everyday life? We love to ask. Obviously, you, you married it, but what other ways do you find joy? Well, you know, I find joy in quiet ways. I mean, we, she and I play crosswords in the evening after dinner, and... Uh, we maybe watch a favorite television show in the evenings. Um, my joy is really right now, right here, at this moment, speaking with you, because that's the fourth purpose of life, our purpose arising in this moment. It's very clear to both of us right now, and your viewers, your listeners, their purpose is clear right at this moment. So we, when we get all confused about what's my cosmic purpose in eons from now or next lifetime or the end of this one, that's one thing. But right now, we can always manage this moment, and I point that out in the book as well. By the way, I might mention also, since I know our time is maybe drawing near, uh, I also mentioned that um, there is an epilogue to the book. I, I pay special attention to the prologue and epilogues of my book, because one is a welcome, uh, is an embracing of the, of the reader and giving them a sense of where we're going. And the epilogue, I need something that really ties things together, uplifts them. So people who go, well, that's fine, Dan, learning life's lessons, and it's fine about career and calling, and finding our hidden life, uh, our life path and our hidden calling, and even living in this moment. That's a segue to the final epilogue, which is finding our spiritual purpose. And the first four provide a foundation to leap into that spiritual realm and begin a practice of daily life to begin understanding how to bridge the conventional and transcendental level of reality and the truths that operate at each of those levels. So for people who really like metaphysical and more spiritual ideas, uh, I deliver that promise uh, in, at the end of the book. Love it. Dan, you're an icon. You're a voice of our generation here and, and where we're moving to. And I, I'm traveling a lot this summer. I'm teaching at the Omega Institute and the Learning yep. Annex. and. Uh, I'm also doing a course on Daily Ohm, and I saw you have a course on there as well. What's, what's your Yeah, course? it's nice to be a fellow Daily Omer. Yeah. Um, yeah, the course on Daily Ohm, um, I think it's a very good value because it's, it's really it's those required courses in the School of Life. Each week, it's a 12-week course. Each week is one of those sessions about discovering our worth, avoiding self-sabotage. There's another course that's called that, but this covers that as one of the 12 areas, and I think it covers it very well and turning what we know into what we do, energizing our body, managing our money, embracing our sexuality, illuminating our shadow, um, embracing our emotions. It, it goes into 12 courses in the School of Life. And so um, thank you for mentioning that. It, what's neat about the Daily Ohm is people can pay what they like. I they love can pay that. Dollar or a hundred dollars, or anything in between, however much they'd like to support the course, they have their choice. So nobody is, can't afford it. And it's about an hour investment a week of time. Uh, people have really liked it, so thank you for mentioning that. And by the way, anybody can drop by, again, the website is PeacefulWarrior.com. I'm going to be traveling quite a bit doing uh, book signings and talks uh, this year, and uh, my event schedule is there, so people can always follow on Facebook and, and so on as they can you, I'm sure, in your work. Perfect. Thanks so much, Dan. The book again, Four Purposes of Life. Check it out. Buy it now. And don't forget to support independent bookstores as well. Go to one in your local area, and if they don't have the book, ask them to order it. Uh, it's yeah. so good to support our local stores and the independent stores with everything going on. Go to Dan's website, PeacefulWarrior.com, to find out where he's at. Maybe he's coming to your area. If not, you've had him here on Explore Your Spirit. Uh, and find them on Daily Ohm. Like Dan said, I love that as well. It's pay what you'd like to pay. It's open and available for everyone. That's the beauty of new media. Dan, can't thank you enough for your time. And like I said at the beginning, my husband and I first connected with love of many books, including yours. And they, you've been in a conversation of ours many times throughout our life. And so from uh, uh, my soul to yours, soul sister to soul brother, thank you for all that you do. Well, thank you. Just the same, Kayla. Good journey. Hi 
Hi Kayla, and here is our color scope forecast. So our colors are violet, orange, and green. All you have to do is intuit which color has the perfect message for you. Violet, orange, or green. So if you chose violet, you're in for a change. Violet energy is about transformation. It's going from a caterpillar to a butterfly. So you're getting some wings there. It's an energy that says you might be a little bit sad about becoming the butterfly only because you have no idea what it's like to be a butterfly. So you may feel sad about leaving that caterpillar body behind, but just let go of that. You know, you're moving into something, a new way of being that is really fabulous, amazing, incredible, and you are going to fly as well. And you have lots of colors. So at this moment, it might feel a little bit stressful for you, but it is going to get better. So you can wear some violet. It'll help you to go through this transformation at this moment and maybe wear or take some amethyst with you, amethyst crystal, that'll help you. Next we have orange, so if you chose orange, it's all about health. So at this moment you might be feeling a little bit, shall we say, de-energized or maybe you've put some weight on. You know, orange is an energy that gets you moving. So you might want to get down on the treadmaster or do some yoga or go to a Pilates class, something that gets your blood moving in your body. You also might want some orange energy. So take some vitamins, some vitamins if you live in the United States. Orange is the color of the emotions. So you might find that you've been getting a little bit grumpy lately and emotions have been coming to the surface that have been surprising you. That's another reason to get on that treadmaster. Because if you exercise or do some yoga, then it will release that emotional tension as well and everyone will be a lot happier around you. Next and finally, we have green. Green energy is about change, just like the violet. But if you think about it, all the leaves have dropped from the trees, well certainly in the United States. So this is about something old and something new coming into your life, but not for another six months. So now you are going through a period of change and letting go, but it's not something drastic like the violet energy. That really is big change. This is a balanced change, and it's something that your heart is involved with, because green is an energy of the heart. So it's saying that you are making change in your life at this moment. You're making plans, and these could be really exciting plans as well, because I'm, I'm hearing marriage and wedding bells. So it could be about new relationships coming into your life, a new career, but it may not be until next year but you are making strides at this moment, planting new seeds so that those trees and new leaves can grow. So that's it for our Colorscope forecast. Back to you, Kayla.